Hello friends, this video on S block elements part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's talk about the trains with the carbonates. So the carbonates of the alkaline earth metal are generally insoluble in water. And they can easily be precipitated by adding sodium or I mean the carbonate with my soluble salt. For example, I have my sodium carbonate. This insoluble in water, if you add calcium chloride, this gives you calcium carbonate and MC. So this guy is insoluble, correct? See, my sodium carbonate was soluble in water. My calcium carbonate is insoluble in water. So as far as the solubility rules of carbonate is concerned, we know that, in fact, there's a rule for solubility that says that for carbonate, all this uh, all the carbonates are insoluble except my group 1 and ammonia group except this all are insoluble so if you see this is group 2 calcium so it is insoluble this is soluble this is first group right so for solubility uh, there are a lot of factors which determine the solubility so be best is based on experiments they have come up with some rules and that is the best rule to find solubility for a given product right I'll take you to the solubility once I'm done with this uh, slide. And all the carbonates decompose on heating to give carbon dioxide and oxides. So if you take any uh, this one, you'll take any, any metal carbon carbonates, you heat this, you get metal oxide and carbon dioxide. This is what it says. Right? So any all the carbonates when you heat it, it becomes metal oxides and carbon dioxide. Beryllium carbonate is very unstable and it gets uh, and why it is unstable? If you see the carb, we have taken this example also. Carbonate ion is a big ion. Let's suppose carbonate ion, beryllium is small. The size difference is very high, so it's very unstable. If you go down the group, if you go down the group, the size increase, and then you you find that the size between the car carbonates and the metals become almost compatible, and thus they become thermally stable. And we have taken this example somewhere where you go down the group, the size of the metal increases, the metal and the carbonates right they become almost comparable to go down the group so it becomes stable let's talk about the solubility part now because it will little confusing many times why it is soluble the various rules for solubility the first thing says that all the nitrate ions they are soluble all are soluble all the nitrates right? if you talk about chlorides ion here also all are soluble but there are some exceptions Exceptions are we have AgCl, we have Ag2Cl2, we have PbCl2. So these are not soluble. We talk about sulfates. So here also all are soluble. Most of them are soluble. I can see that. And there are some exceptions here also, like barium sulfate, PbSO4, SiSO4. So these are not soluble in water. I'm talking about solubility in water actually. Right? If you talk about carbonates, which we had this in this case, we to minus. So here if you see uh, most are insoluble. Most are not soluble, I can say. Right? But there are some exceptions which are soluble are NH4 plus carbonates and group 1 carbonate. For example, sodium carbonate, potassium carbonate. So here if you see sodium carbonate was soluble, right, because the group 1 are soluble. We talk about hydroxides also. So here also most are not soluble, right, most are not soluble. And the exceptions are again here, the group 1, for example, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, those guys. Then I have uh, calcium hydroxide. I think barium hydroxide also. There are few exceptions to it, right? Similarly for sulfate also, I have most of them are not soluble. But there are exceptions of the group 1, group 2 and NH4 plus. They are soluble. So these are my some ex uh, rules for finding whether a particular compound is soluble or not. Best is by experiments. But if you can remember these rules, you can at least tell just by name, the name that it is soluble. For example, 
sodium carbonate, carbonate, sodium, group 1, yes, soluble. Then you have calcium carbonate, carbonates, most are insoluble. It is not an infection, that means it is insoluble. So let's talk about the properties of sulfates now. See, the sulfates of the alkaline earth metal are stable. They are white solids and they are stable. They are very, very stable. And they can be prepared by reacting the alkaline metal with sulfuric acid, for example, calcium plus H2SO4, you get calcium sulfate. That's nitrogen gas. Also, you can react the oxides of uh, metal also with sulfuric acid. You will get here calcium sulfate plus water. So you can prepare by reacting metal or metal oxides or metal hydroxide also if you want. And same H2SO4. You get CaCO4 plus US2. If you have calcium carbonate also, you can react with sulfuric acid. You get calcium sulfate plus carbon dioxide as well. So you can get this by reacting metal, metal oxide, hydroxide or metal carbonate with sulfuric acid. They are soluble in water. As I have told for sulphate, the rule is it is insoluble, but it is for sulphate the rule was it is insoluble in most of the cases, but there is the exception. The exception it is group 1, group 2 and NH4 plus. So then talking about the group 2, so it is mostly soluble in water. And the solubility decrease if you go down. And the reason is if you see right, the solubility depends on a lot of factors. So there is a hydration enthalpy also. So if you so because it go down, the hydration enthalpy decreases. So hydration enthalpy, as I told, decreases because they increase in atomic size, right? So hydration enthalpy decreases, so the solubility also decreases because solubility also de depends on the hydration enthalpy. Let's talk about nitrites now. See, the nitrates are made by dissolving carbonates in nitric acid, similar to what we have for sulfate. It can also be prepared by heating the metals, for example, calcium with nitrogen, then you get ca 3 or magnesium with nitrogen, you get mg 3 So you have two ways, either heat the nitro with nitrogen or you have the carbonates, you react with nitric acid. And as I told, they have the formation, uh, they have the regular property to absorb water molecules. So if you see the magnesium nitrate, it can take 6 water molecules, with barium nitrate it can not take any water molecules. So if you see the hydration tendency decreases as we go down the group. Why? Because the size increases. As I told, the lower is the size and higher is the charge, the greater the power to absorb water molecules. But if you go down the group, the size increases, thus the hydration power decreases. Then we have the liquid ammonia. I won't discuss much. It is almost similar to alkali. Similar to alkali, here also it gives a deep blue black solution because of this uh, ammoniate electrons. This is blue. Similar uh, behavior as we had in the alkali metal. The group two metals have a high tendency to form complex compound, and this is uh, this is why because of the small size and high charge. They told small size and high charge. They have a huge tendency to form complex compound. For example, beryllium and magnesium have higher tendency to form complex compound. One example can be chlorophyll. If you see, it is nothing but a complex compound of compound of magnesium. So, the group two elements have higher tendency to form stable complex as you compare with group one. Why? Because the charge is more, right? The charge is more and size is less. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.